the the the, inter the interesting twist in it all is Tevez, which, which has been yeah. going on for so long, and he, he's on record as saying he's desperate to get away okay. by the end of the uh, transfer deadline, which is on Tuesday evening or Tuesday night. I just can't see it happening, can you? No, and there's, there's another subplot to this, that if, if he doesn't get his move and goes back to City, he actually faces another fine. You know, this is on top of the 9.3 million. He could get fined for another breach of, uh, of uh, or gross misconduct again, because when he was fined back in December, he was told to return to, to, uh, to England, which he didn't do. So he's, he's committed a further breach, so he could face more charges. I think if he does go, Italy's the more likely uh, place the only way he's going to go, Jonathan, is if City drop their asking price? Well, they're not too far away from what the, uh, the, Mil the Milan clubs have been mooting. I think, I think Mil Inter Milan were offering 23 million and, and City are looking for about 26, 27, 30 million euros. You'd think they'd accept it to get him off the books, wouldn't you? Yeah, they've, but they've turned it into a point of principle. That, that's yeah. one of the things that's, that, that's quite obvious over this, that they've, they've got this hardline policy. And they, they'd argue that, you know, in the summer, Corinthians offered 44 million for Carlos Tevez, and that only fell down because Corinthians couldn't produce they a bank. They didn't have any money. They didn't have any money, <laughs> yeah. so it wasn't it was monopoly money. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, they would say that his, his value's already fallen, almost halved since uh, since he he went on strike, as it were. And they don't want to be seen to be selling him on the cheap. There's also clubs that have been inquiring about him on loan. Uh, I believe West Ham uh, made a discreet inquiry about that, and again, have been told by City uh, that he's not going on loan. Uh, it has to be a straight sale. Um, I, it look, it, it's heading, heading the wire, it's heading to a, a deadline day. Can you see it happening or not? Yeah, I can, I can see him going to, I can see one of the Italian clubs just offering those few extra pounds and, and, and getting him. But, um, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of relieved people at, at City if that happens, because the last thing they do want is him back at Carrington. <laughs> <on Thursday. laughs> trading trading yeah. with the reserves. Uh, another City player threatening to leave or what, is uh, Balotelli. After his four-match suspension this week for that stamp on Scott Parker, his agent came out and blamed everybody apart yeah. from his client, which was, of course, a big surprise. Um, he blamed um, the referees, he blamed the media, and blamed Harry Redknapp for complaining about the tackle, but, um, and says, you're driving my man out of English football. No, I know, and there's a real, there's a real, um, it seems to be very much the thing this season that uh, referees, the FA, everyone's getting blamed for ruining the game. Uh, I was reading Joey Barton on Twitter again last night, and I know he's got a point, and his point was that, uh, you know, he's calling for, um, you know, to, um, modern techno video, video technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he's to, right about yeah, that. yeah, and he's right about that. But it, but it is, and it, it, it it's, it's I, th I think it's an agent just, just, just buying into this. It's everybody else's fault except the people on the pitch. Um, I, I, I was at Arsenal last weekend, but I thought Balotelli was guilty, um, and he needs to straight away. You thought he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 uh, just shut up and get on with it. Yeah, and Howard Webb, the referee, must have seen it. I mean, that was one of his complaints that Webb mm. was right there. He yeah. didn't take any action. But then Webb said to the FA or the Premier League, "I didn't see it." Yeah, no. What well, he, he he was turning away, wasn't he? I, I I don't think he I don't think he did see it. I think if you actually watch the, if you watch it in slow motion, he is actually his head is turning away as it happened. So I can see why he missed it. But um, no, I, as I say, Balotelli, you know, he is what he is. But he's entertaining. I think he's been quite good for the Premier League. I think we enjoy writing about him. As far as but, the but, agent's um, concerned, I mean, if you don't want your man to be criticised, tell him not to try and stamp yeah. on somebody's head. You know, it's a fairly yeah, it's, it's a fairly obvious, it's a fairly straightforward formula. Yeah, I, where, uh, are, are you a Balotelli fan? I don't oh, mean the kicking in the head. I'm talking <laughs> about you know him as him as a character in the Premier League. I'm a massive fan of his. Yeah, yeah. I love watching him play, and I mean, in some ways, well, in, in every way, really, I'm sad that he's you know he's got this ban because I love watching him play, and I, th I, I think his type of character is exactly what we need. I mean, as you say, I'm not saying we need somebody no. who tries to stamp on people's heads, but we need more characters. In the game, there's so much pressure on players, and so much pressure to conform. It's brilliant to see somebody like him, and he's a ter he's a fantastic player. But you know, you can't do stuff like that. But is he a liability to a, to a team? I mean, if you are continually suspended, is it his third red card since he joined? I think yes. you think it might be. Yeah. Well, City. Yeah. I mean, one of one of the Mancini's triumphs, I think, this season has been to manage all these controversies that have been happening, including the Tevez thing. I know Tevez hasn't actually been here for a lot of the time, but has been to manage all these controversies and somehow for City's 
progress not to be derailed. So uh, from the outside you would think, yes, it is incredibly disruptive that Balotelli keeps getting um, suspended, but then he comes back and scores vital goals. So uh, maybe with another player um, it, it, it wouldn't be acceptable, but with him he seems to come back as if nothing's happened. Yeah, I think um, if, if City did sign Andy Carroll, then putting him and Balotelli together would be a fascinating social experiment you know, in, <laughs> yeah. in the dressing room. But I don't see it working somehow. <laughs> uh, no, not really. He's a top player though, as, as, as Ollie said. You know, the, the potential is there for for everyone to see and, and um, I believe one thing City are, are thinking of doing and Brian Marwood's already contacted Mike Riley, the referee's head about this, is just seeking a bit of clarification uh, for decisions like that because they do feel a, a run of decisions have gone against them. I, I agree with Matt on, on the actual Balotelli incident, I think he, he was reckless in, in, in what he did but uh, there is a feeling that he's being picked on because of his reputation and maybe City will get the referees in to, to actually just have a, have a word with him and try and see if there's a way forward for him in English football. But like a lot of players before him, you have to live with that kind of character, don't you? There's no yeah. good saying to Balotelli, OK, you must stop doing that and you have to behave like that, because the, you know, the Eric Cantona yeah. feel about him is part of his strength. Absolutely, and, and Mancini does seem to be the, the one person that holds the key to, to Balotelli. I mean, Mourinho said he was unmanageable, but, but Mancini has, in fairness, found a way to uh, make him very productive for the team. You know, I think he's got 10 goals this season. It's 15 games or whatever, so th I think there is a way to accommodate him, and you're not going to you're not going to make him Mr. Sensible. Yeah, um, but what you he probably wouldn't want to either. No, because he, he would take that. away. Yeah, and, and yeah. when he scores those penalties, <clears throat> you know, it's fantastic in, in a pressure situation like he was at Tottenham, and it's it's part of his makeup. It's part of almost wanting to be the centre of attention. Yeah. Um, to to do things like that. A, a lot of questions uh, on Twitter for us, uh, Matt. How good is Balotelli, they're asking? No, I think he's very good, and I was about to say that I think Mancini does deserve a bit of credit because um, an awful lot of people, probably myself included, um, I probably did write it. Uh, I can't remember what I wrote <laughs> last week, to be honest, but I probably did write it. You tried to blank it out. Um, um, but questioned the, the sanity of, of, of signing him, particularly when you know we'd watched Inter Milan in that European yeah. Cup run and, and Mourinho wouldn't pick him. And when he did come on, he looked like a complete pain in the backside. You know, the sort of histrionics and the, and the tantrums. And we just thought, oh, this, this lad's appalling. And he arrives at City in this sort of this dressing room that's been thrown together and needs to gel fast because the Mancini's under pressure thinking well that's the last person he mm. needs but I think that I think the acid test now is would you say he's a good signing and I think mm. most people would say yes he's a good signing yeah and he's one of the most exciting players in the Premier League I, he's probably in my top three interviews I would like to conduct I'd <laughs> love to interview him I'd love to yeah. Walk around Manchester <coughs> with him as he's handing tramps ten grand in cash, and <laughs> all this kind of thing, and yeah. taking people. To <laughs> take, I, I think it's letting off myth, fireworks and this kind of thing. But, that, but, but that's the great thing about him; you never know what's next. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think he let off the firework, did he? I think it was one of his mates, mates. but um, obviously burnt his bathroom <laughs> down. But but you, uh, you know, he, he's he's a character, and I, I think it's an urban myth. But the, I love the story that he might have taken a kid back to school that wasn't at school because he was being bullied and. When, when I spoke, you know, and, and he walked into a college in Manchester, yeah. didn't he? And yeah. uh, this guy's just fantastic. What did know? he do when he walked into the college in Manchester? I think he, I think he, he needed, didn't he need the loo? Yeah. yeah. And, and he went in, and, and suddenly he was in their classroom, and he ended went, up talking to the, yeah. talking yeah. to the students. Oh, he gave us, gave us. Yeah, yeah, he's just, right. uh, he's a character. Uh, he's, you know. yeah, he is a character. Do, do you, have, do you have sympathy with City, Ollie, you know, writing to? Um, the Referees Association, Mike Riley, about this consistency thing. I mean, on the other hand, we, we saw um, a penalty given against um, Liverpool. Uh, it was given against City, wasn't it, yeah. on Wednesday in the Carling Cup when the ball hit the foot and bounced up onto the arm. Well, yesterday Newcastle had exactly the same and no penalty is given. Mm. Yeah, I, I have some sympathy with City because I thought the, the penalty <coughs> against Micah Richards was very, very harsh. Yeah. Um, but generally, I don't, I, I don't believe in kind of agendas against clubs. I don't think agendas against clubs exist, really. But I, 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 think, um, I think maybe sometimes when a club is up at the top of the table, and United have had this before, they, 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 feel, that, um, they feel that they're more in the public spotlight so that they feel that people are, are out to get them and to try and, to try and knock them down. I don't think there's any agenda against them Particularly, I think I think actually City have dealt with it all in, incredibly well. And as I say, I, what I admire about them is the way that they've just kept on. You know, they have refused to be derailed. I think they've been terrific this season, City. I don't really think they've got any need to complain. 
them about anything because I think the, the decisions. I know it's it's, it's a kind of lazy thing to say, but the I, I do believe in the in the thing that decisions even themselves out, and yeah. there are going to be until until we adopt what Joey Barton and many others before have suggested about video technology. Until we adopt that and drag ourselves out of the dark ages, I'm afraid we just have to uh, put up with uh, injustices that happen because injustices will happen, and that is the idiocy of the failure to adopt new technology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we were all in the press box at Anfield on Wednesday, and the minute that penalty was given, we could watch a replay. We could yeah. see the ball hitting the foot and then down the hand, out. and the referee was the one person on, on, in the whole of the stadium that, that wasn't aware of that, and, and it, it was just a classic case that if there'd been an immediate review, then that penalty could have been avoided. Yeah, because Phil Dowd kept doing this with his hands, and he to say, yeah. deli not, not deliberate, he hit his hands up there not knowing. But I mean, uh, where City are right is these decisions change the course of a season. Yeah. They change the course of the season and they change the course of... Well, change the course of that game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, and therefore change the course of a season, because yeah. one team's maybe winning a trophy now that wouldn't have done otherwise. But as I say, that is the system that we have, and, and uh, there are enough people against it, to my eternal surprise, um, that nothing nothing seems to be done about it. I thought, I, 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 I last think, word again. Yeah, I was going to say, because what, what FIFA aren't accepting is that the game has moved on, and the game is, and where it's become so hard for referees is the game is so much faster. Yeah. Like the players yeah. are moving so much faster. And uh, I think we're very hard on referees. I think managers are, fans are, we are. We'll, 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 we all go to football games. You try and call that live when you see yeah. it most of the time. I think, it's, I think it's virtually impossible. But I think it's the consistency. These days, yes, it? One, I, I think it's you'll, you'll get one referee giving it, another referee know, not giving it. I know, but my point is, Brian, you know, and they've obviously got, you know, their brains adapt to the speed. But as I say, I'm at I'm I'm two or three games a week, every week, and I'm watching it as well. And I'm glad I've got a video replay yeah. before yeah. I make my call on that, because when I've seen it live, I'm thinking, Crikey, I, I think it's just such a difficult job, such a difficult job, and I think we're far too quick to to criticise referees when they are just doing their best. You know, they are doing their damnedest, and, and most of the time they get it right. I'm adapting to the speed, and we're going to move on. That um, <laughs> Manchester United's FA Cup exit at Anfield yesterday means domestically they only have the Premier League uh, to go for, but can they win it with a goalkeeper like David De Gea?